Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of the Connected Body Podcast. I have a great interview for you today. It's with Ellen Patrick of ellenpatrickyoga.com. Ellen is a 500 hour yoga teacher. She is a certified yoga therapist and a certified mindful and meditation teacher, yeah. I've had the pleasure personally of being in Ellen's yoga classes and in her meditation classes, and she truly has a special and unique gift that she brings to the world. So I'm so excited to have her on today. Uh, she's among the few yoga teachers who've extended their training into yoga therapy. She works with adults of all different ages who are going through injuries, cancer, chronic illness, mental depression, addiction. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful practice. And she just is so compassionate and she shines her light wherever she goes. Uh, we are also going to be talking about breath and movement and how not only it relates to yoga, but it relates to fitness. It relates to our health and our well being and our everyday healthy lifestyle. So please help me welcome Ellen Patrick of ellenpatrickyoga.com. Hi, Ellen. Welcome to the Connected Podcast. I am so happy you're here. You look so beautiful in your blue today. Welcome. Thank you so much, Laura, and I'm thrilled to be here with you. Well, we have a lot to talk about today. So we're going to start with your background. You have this amazing background as a dancer. So I want to talk about how you got started as a dancer, what that was like, and then how it kind of flowed into the yoga and meditation. And it did kind of flow, but it took a couple of detours. So I've been dancing. I think I came out of the womb dancing, but I started taking formal dance classes when I was four years old. I started wow. as a tap dancer. I loved tap. Um, I moved into ballet, which I found rather constricting for my personality. And then I found jazz classes. Mm -hmm. Jazz hands. <laughs> and that just helped me to express who I really was. I could put my whole personality into it. And so I just love jazz and tap. And I guess it was around when I was 17, I had to make the decision. Was this just a hobby or did I really want to like make a move for Broadway? And I grew up in New York. So Broadway was just one or two subway stops away. Wow. And so I remember writing my diary. Okay, now's the time to, you know, to decide. This is a life-changing decision. And I thought, well, you know, whether I make it on Broadway or not isn't really relevant. What was relevant was I didn't want to be an older person looking back saying, I wish I had tried that. Mm -hmm. I wonder what would have happened. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I made the decision that, okay, I'm going to try to be a professional dancer. This is the commitment I'm making to myself. And at the time I was, um, I got a scholarship at Jojo's dance factory yeah. in the late seventies, early eighties <laughs> <laughs> was like the premier place to go if you wanted to dance on wow. Broadway. Wow. The best choreographers, the best teachers were there. The excitement, I'm getting chills just thinking about I'm it. getting in, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, the excitement, the energy, you know, we used to take classes with a live band with congas and drums oh, and wow. bass guitars and there were just, it was, the energy was so, so thrilling and exciting. Yeah, And so I was on scholarship there for a couple of years and um, then started getting a couple of gigs here and there. I was part of the first and only chorus line at the Neville Hotel in the Catskill. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. It was a trip and a half. And um, I was in Jesus Christ Superstar wow. at Queen's Theater in the Park. 
And then I got this incredible gig to dance at the Nile Hilton in Cairo, Egypt. Oh my goodness. Right. And I took that. It was a crazy thing to do. I was 22, I think at the time, but I always wanted to use dance to travel, you know, so to get a job yeah. overseas, I have this great opportunity to see a foreign land and then I get to do what I love. So How beautiful. You know, I, I climbed the pyramids. I water skied on the Nile river. I rode horseback in, yeah. in the Sahara desert. You know, those were all my sideline adventures. And then I had this great gig wow. at, the, um, at the nightclub at the Nile Hilton at the time, right on the Nile river. Oh um, my gosh. Yeah, it was wonderful. It was thrilling. And, um, and then I had a back injury oh. and it was pretty serious in that I was in a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And so I started taking some yoga. I had taken a few yoga classes before that, but I started to take yoga classes um, pretty regularly to help me stay in shape, to keep me flexible mm -hmm. and to help with the healing process. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. sure enough, it did all that. Um, and I went back to my dance classes, but at this point, I was 23, 24, and I had to be realistic about my goals. Mm -hmm. You know, a professional dancer's life is like that of an athlete. Right. Um, it's short-lived. Right. And so I had in the back of my mind, well, if I don't get to a certain level by a certain age, I really need to, needed to implement plan B. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and at that time, I had met my husband and our relationship was getting serious. And did I wanna be on the road all the time? Right. Um, and so I made the decision. Um, I think it was spurred by two things, the pain I had gone through through my injuries, yeah. and thinking that I'd always be one injury away from not having an income. Right. And, and my relationship with my husband, did I want to go on the road and then and possibly lose that relationship? So right. I decided, to take a corporate job. Yes. After traveling the world. Right, after all that excitement. <laughs> and yet though, I decided to spend time, if I'm gonna be in the corporate world with my steady paycheck and my health insurance, yep. um, I wanted to still stay in show business somehow behind the scenes. So for mm -hmm. about, I wanna say six years, I worked in talent agencies. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was very, very cool. I worked at William Morris, Agency for the Performing Arts. So I worked with a lot of jazz artists and comedians. Mm -hmm. And that kind of filled, fulfilled my creative side. Mm -hmm. But the corporate end just was sucking my soul dry. Mm -hmm. It really was. Um, you know, and then in my, my life travels kind of got circuitous. I wound up moving to got married, moved to Los Angeles, where I worked at Paramount Home Video. Mm -hmm. And then we came back to New York and I worked at Simon & Schuster Publishing. So to some extent, I always stayed in, in the creative field, but I was really, it was just sucking me dry. And I felt that it was having an effect on my health as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I was always taking yoga classes, you know, for the mental balance, um, to move my body. Right. And I used to go to different studios and my husband would come along every once in a while. And I would say, you know, mm -hmm. when I retire, I'm going to be a yoga teacher. <laughs> I used to say that all the time. I'd walk into a studio. Well, if I ever had a yoga studio, right. I would decorate it like that. And I would carry books and, and, you know, so I used to daydream right. like that. And one day my husband got tired of hearing me say that and said, <laughs> well, then why don't you just do it? Wow. <laughs> Not. <laughs> so, but at the time I was about 40 years old when I first became right. a certified yoga teacher. Um, and I always had in the back of my mind that I wanted to use yoga as a way to help people heal, to mm -hmm. empower people, mm -hmm. uh, because that's what it did for me. Um, you know, I had to work my way through a herniated disc. That's what my mm -hmm. injury was. Um, and it, certainly what I was doing in yoga was helping me. Right. And I just felt that there had to be a way to share this information. Right. You know, how could I 
work with people, show them that they had healing potential and yeah. how they can use it instead of just sitting back and waiting for the injury to heal, waiting for the illness right. to pass. And right. so I went on for training as a yoga therapist, oh. um, which was a very extensive training, learning how to apply the, um, the tools of yoga, mainly the poses, the asana, mm -hmm. breathing techniques and meditation and mantra. So how could I use those tools? Right. I love that because I think a lot of people, they hear yoga and they just think almost like it's those crazy poses where people are in all sorts of gymnastic poses and they think maybe that's not for me, but here there's a whole aspect of yoga that's therapy and rehabilitation. Absolutely. And I think that to a certain extent, yoga, especially in the United States, has, been, has become more about fitness mm -hmm. than it has about the whole body experience, right? You know, using the breath as a way to um, manipulate the energy in our body to um, bring balance to our nervous system. Yes. How can we use meditation to teach us to befriend our minds? Yes. You know, how can we use mantra as a way of setting intentions for our lives? Mm -hmm. And so, oh, I learned all these beautiful tools. And um, then I went on to owning a yoga studio for 12 years. Oh, wow. Um, this was right outside New York City. Her retirement, um, right? Yeah, but, well, <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me tell you, <laughs> that was definitely um, a labor of love. Um, a lot of hard work, hard work mm -hmm. that I loved. And one of the benefits of, of all that hard work was having a community of like-minded individuals mm -hmm. who who recognize the spirit in ourselves, who recognize that this was more than just a physical practice. Um, and that was just a beautiful gift that I received from, from having that studio. And then um, moving forward, um, I did close my studio. I had, during the course of 12 years, had been in three different locations and my building mm -hmm. was old in the new mm -hmm. landlord. Um, decided to take over the building and not yeah. renew my lease. And at the time, my dad was was not doing too well. He lived in Florida. Um, mm -hmm. My husband was getting very tired of shoveling snow. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Yeah. <laughs> and so we made the decision to move to Florida, uh, specifically Boca Raton, where mm -hmm. um, I'm coming to you now. Right. Um, yeah. And so I've been trying to... Um, do privates with people. And I find right. that the skills that I've accumulated over the years are more effective on a private level. Um, Love that, yeah. You know, particularly with people who have not only structural issues like bad backs or bad knees, but I have a client who's a Parkinson's patient. Mm -hmm. I worked at uh, the Boca Raton Regional Hospital for, I think it was about five years teaching yoga to cancer patients. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. not, you know, these are, are people who are undergoing chemotherapy, radiation, right. who don't have their full stamina, but the, the purpose of the program that I was teaching in was right. to help them build the stamina. Right. to get their energy back so that they could go back into the mainstream world right. feeling confident with tools that they could use to help them remain healthy, right. to remain in remission and to, you know, possibly go into yoga studios and take regular classes. Yeah. I, I love that because like we said, it's just, there's so much that you can do to help people who are injured and need the healing with yoga and the breath and the mindfulness. I think it's so, um, just so important for people to know that that is out there. Now I well, wanted- you know, And before we go on, I just wanted to add one more thing. It's not so much about me helping them that that satisfies me mm -hmm. but it's really more about giving students tools to yes. empower themselves yes that's huge you know, because particularly when we're injured when we're not feeling well yeah. when we're deeply fatigued or depressed or anxious you know we want to know what can we do right you know um yeah you can turn to medication you can have surgery but that's putting 
your health and well-being in somebody else's hands. Right. How can how can yoga help to enhance that experience? You may need the medication, you may need the surgery, but then how do we heal from these things? Yeah. And so it's about empowering each individual. I love that, Ellen. That's so, so true because to, to have someone or a doctor or someone say, you know, you have this disease or you have this and you're, you're like, it's a crushing thing. I know when I have my back issue, I thought, oh my gosh, this is it. This is how I'm going to be forever you know? And then when you realize that there are other things that you can do and modalities to help yourself, you know, it's, it is, it's just empowering. Yeah. And it's like what you do, you know, I'm, I'm one of your clients and you empower me. Mm -hmm. You know, I have Mm -hmm. osteoporosis. I I still have to deal with my back issue. I need to stay strong. So I turn to you to, to learn how to keep my muscles really strong, to keep my bones from getting too brittle. Strong. <laughs> <And she's> strong. <laughs> so I want to touch base before we got to Florida, but going back to New York for a second, sure. you had a salt sweet and did yoga. Tell yes, us about that. Yes, yes. So that was, thank you for bringing me back to that. That was um, during the transition of my studio closing and before I moved down to Florida, um, my husband had had three sinus surgeries and had difficulty fighting off sinus infection. Mm-hmm. And we came across this modality of dry salt therapy. Mm-hmm. And what it is, it's a machine that um, grinds uh, medical grade salt into really, really fine particles right. and aerates them into a room. Mm-hmm. And all the person has to do is sit and breathe in the salt particles. Mm-hmm. And the reason why it's salt is because salt naturally has um, many healing qualities. It's right. antibacterial, antiviral, anti-inflammatory. It helps to dry up mucus. Um, and this dry salt therapy, because the particles are so, so tiny, will go deep into the lungs. Mm-hmm. Uh, many of your listeners may be familiar with neti pots, mm-hmm. which is like, it's a wet salt right. therapy. It's almost the opposite, and, yeah. Yeah, and it's very, very effective, but the dry salt therapy really goes into, like, the, the neti pot flushes out the sinuses, right? but the dry salt therapy will go into the lungs. So people who have cystic fibrosis, mm-hmm. who are recovering from pneumonia, can mm-hmm. really, really benefit from that. And so we had several salt rooms in New York mm-hmm. and I started teaching yoga classes uh, within these salt rooms. <laughs> wow. um, and I was even written up by the London Times, oh, uh, wow. which was really exciting. Um, yeah, and so we did, what I did as a, as a practice in these salt rooms was to use yoga poses mm-hmm to strengthen and stretch the primary and secondary muscles of respiration. Mm -hmm. So that would be your diaphragm, um, stretching open the intercostal muscles, the muscles that are between the the rib cage. Right. Those are the muscles that help to lift and open the rib cage so that your lungs have more room to expand Mm -hmm. and take um, take in oxygen. Yeah. And so for many, I guess that was a couple of years, um, we had these classes in the salt room and that was a lot of fun because the floor that. was covered with Himalayan yeah. salt. It was like being at the beach. Yes, we ha- we actually had a salt cave here for a while. And my husband and I used to go all the time. It was on the walls, it was on the floor and they even had a, a room for little kids with like buckets and shovels and they would just right. play in there. It was, I, yes. we loved it. Love, 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 yes. love it. Yes. All right. So I have a question now. So I know a big part of what you do, and we talked about this a little bit, is like breath and movement and how it's so important when it relates to yoga and fitness and just living a healthy lifestyle. So can you touch more on that? For yeah, us? I would love to. Um, it's, it's ironic that we breathe 24-7. We don't even have to think about it. Yeah. Most people do not breathe efficiently. And 
that was part of the reason why we had these salt rooms mm -hmm. was to, and why I did yoga was to help teach people how to breathe better. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea was to breathe better, bring in more oxygen, oxygenate the system, remove carbon dioxide and waste product from the, from the body. But then how did I, how do I apply it with yoga? Right. And this is one of the ancient teachings that I had learned as a yoga therapist. So I'm just going to give a brief little snippet of, of breath anatomy. So we have yeah. this, I, I won't get too nerdy, yeah. <laughs> <Darn>. <laughs> but we have this major muscle of respiration that separates the chest cavity. I'll move back a little bit. It separates the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity. And it's sort mm -hmm. of like a dome shaped muscle. Mm -hmm. So when we breathe, the lungs inflate and this diaphragm contracts downwards. And when we exhale, that's why our bellies expand. It's not because we're taking air into the belly, it's because we're pushing the internal organs out. Mm -hmm. Then when we exhale, the diaphragm relaxes and moves back up into place. The lungs deflate. Right? Mm -hmm. and so this movement, yeah, the movement of the diaphragm is integral to us inhaling and exhaling. Mm -hmm. And where that becomes helpful, when we employ certain breathing techniques, we can start to strengthen that diaphragm. Mm -hmm. right? With many people, myself included, when I'm sitting at the computer too long, we end up sitting like this. Yep. Just yep. kind of slumped over, the diaphragm has nowhere to move. Yep. So through a yoga practice, through fitness, we learn to stand up nice and tall. There's room for this diaphragm to move and we're getting all our breath in. Right. This helps to regulate the nervous system. Okay. When we are breathing deep, long breaths, our nervous system realizes that everything is good. We're not in a stress situation. Mm -hmm. we can relax. Right. The muscles start to lose their tension and we can move more effectively, mm -hmm. right? right? In addition to, um, to that, if we pay attention to our breath as we're moving, mm -hmm. we become more focused in the present moment. Being focused in the present moment, moment helps us to pay attention to how we're moving. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I know from, from fitness, from even yoga classes, there's this mentality to push, yeah. right? right? And that's yeah. where injuries happen. And when the muscles are tight, injuries happen. Yes. And we're not paying attention and we're just doing what the right. teacher's telling us to do, injuries can right. happen. And so by being anchored in the present moment with the breath, we start to listen to our bodies, mm -hmm. right? When our breath gets a little short and quick, we're pushing too hard. Mm -hmm. If the breath is smooth and easy, we're in exactly the place we need to be. And by paying attention, we can decide, do I want more? Do I want less? Mm -hmm. Am I in that sort of Goldilocks place where it's right. just right? Because right. <laughs> you know, when we wake up in the morning, we may be very tired. We may not have slept well. Right. We don't want to be pushing in our practice or in our fitness class. Right. Otherwise, there's that danger of injury. Right. Same thing if we, we come into a, a practice after a hard day at work or after being in traffic and we're all wired up, we need yep. to calm down before we start moving those tight muscles, yeah. right? Yeah, so important. Most right. people are and walking so, around stressed. Like. Yeah, and so one of the things I learned that I found fascinating was that certain movements take place on an inhale. And mm -hmm. certain movements take place on an exhale. Mm -hmm. And why is that? When we move in coordination with the shape changes that the breath creates. So when we inhale and we inflate the lungs, there's this expansive quality to our torso. When we exhale and the lungs deflate, it's a little bit more condensive. Mm -hmm. right? So we could even, let's take like three breaths like that now and just feel how that expansion and contraction naturally takes place. Okay. Take a deep inhale. 
and exhaling. And in just two more breaths, really experiencing the expansion, the condensing. Yeah, beautiful, well done. And one more. Good, perfect. So in yoga, we're taught that any movement that takes place where the arms or the legs are moving away from the torso, that takes place on an inhale. Mm -hmm. When the arms or legs come closer to the body, mm -hmm. that takes place on an exhale. So for example, all, I'll give, I'll just demonstrate. A warrior one pose. Yeah. <laughs> a warrior one pose like this. Right. Is a back bend. My legs, right. my arms are away from the center of my body. I can really help to facilitate inhales, right? Mm -hmm. In a forward bend, this would take place on an exhale. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. It like naturally makes sense. Right, right. And so we can enhance a forward bend by focusing on the exhale, maybe lengthening right. the exhale. And when it comes to fitness work, every time, the core is involved, mm -hmm. it's a condensing, you're pulling in the belly, you're right. using your abdominal muscles. So right. when you're lifting weights, you're doing bicep reps on the exhale, as you're lifting the arms and they come closer to the torso, as you need to engage your core, yeah. that's the exhale. Yeah. The yep. inhale would be when you lower your arms. Right. right. And so when you start to move that way, movement becomes effective, it's efficient, you're using less energy yeah. and getting more out of whatever it is you're doing, whether it's right. a yoga pose, whether it's um, lifting weights, um, even that. in stretching, yeah. the breath because, helps tremendously. Yeah, everything's connected. The whole body moves as one full unit. And when we really, like you said, just connect to what we're doing, it's that much more effective. That, not yeah. only that, but you're anchored in the present and then movement becomes very meditative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and again, you're anchored in the present, you're paying attention to your body, you're listening to its cues mm -hmm. and you're helping to prevent injury. Love it, love it. That was a great explanation of it. Thank okay. you. <laughs> I hope so, I didn't get nerdy. <laughs> no, and I'm a science geek, so I love, I love all that, bring it on. <laughs> well, we're coming toward the end of the show, but I want people to know how they can connect with you and how they can find you. I know you have this beautiful free 15 minute meditation for everybody. So tell us where can people go to download that audio? Yes. So my website is ellenpatrickyoga.com. Um, very easy to get to. And when you get to my website, you'll have the opportunity to sign up for my newsletter and you get a free 15 minute mindfulness meditation uh, audio. That. Yeah, which oh. is something that I've been doing a lot of lately. Um, meditation is just my anchor, my stability, my, my grounding. Yeah, yes. so I wanna share that with, with listeners and I'm all over social media. Um, my Instagram is Ellen P Yoga, mm -hmm. and my Facebook is well. It includes my maiden name, but if you just look up Ellen Patrick, you'll find me as Ellen Rorig Patrick. Patrick. And my Twitter is mindful at mindful Ellen. I love it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to put all those links so everybody can find you. But I have personally experienced Ellen's yoga and her meditation classes. And she is amazing. She has this beautiful, gentle way about her, but yet still just firm and in control. And she shares all her amazing knowledge with you. She's just I love her. I know you guys are going to love her. She's a beautiful soul. And I just want to say thank you so much, Ellen, for being on the podcast today. And I thank know you, everyone... Laura. I so appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share this information. I just think it's so important. And if we all started meditating, I think the world would be a much kinder place to live in. Oh, 
I totally agree. And I think that we are helping to get that message out. And really that's what this interview and all my interviews are about, just to help everyone, give them the tools so that they can be empowered by themselves, empower yeah. themselves. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. All right. Bye everyone. And we'll see you on the next episode. Take care.